This is a chess robot made using a Raspberry Pi and some Python programming. This video will be a showcase of this robot's abilities. However, a more detailed description about what this robot can do and how it is made will be posted in documentation. The first step to building it will be gathering some electronic components and then assembling the robot using an aluminum frame and some servo motors that act as the robot's joints. As you can see, the robotic arm is completed as there is a servo motor for each joint of the arm and a servo motor for a claw that will grab chest pieces. Now the way that the algorithm works is a bit complex since it uses a recursion tens of thousands of times to predict the next feature and moves. But more importantly, there needs to be a function that evaluates the pieces setups for both black and white and returns some score based on this value. A very common way to do this is just to assign a constant score to each piece and then add up all the pieces that each side has. However, this linear evaluation method is too simple and often creates predictable moves. Thus, I created a non-linear evaluation that basically looks around each player's kings for pieces, scores each piece based on some value, squares that total value so that having many strong pieces next to your king is exponentially better than having, let's say, just pawns. And finally, multiplies it by some increasing value called the, the timed king defense. What this does is firstly, create a strong bias in the program to defend its king rather than just simply attack the opponent player, and also times the effectiveness of this defense to be the greatest towards the middle and end of the game, rather than the beginning when the program's priority should be to get the pieces out of its area and onto the board. Now the evaluation is established, the program basically just iterates through the possible moves and recursively calls itself n times, predicting all possible next n plays for both players. So let's say if it wants to run four recursions, it's going to check the all possible next four moves for both players. So two moves from the white side and two moves from the black side. And it uses this evaluation function to score each of the pathways and predictions that it makes. Uh, this is what is called the minimax algorithm and it's optimized using pruning which basically stops the recursion if an upcoming score is just not good enough and does not need further predictions. Now I can showcase the GUI of this program rather than this separate file over here. As you can see it gives you this welcome message and also shows the GUI of the actual program. Now I'll talk about this GUI for a brief moment and explain just the basic of how it works. To set up the pieces, I first initialized using the chess library uh, from Python. I downloaded a set of pictures of each piece which will be also linked uh, in my GitHub. I set up the board columns and I drew this and I drew each and every chess piece and square on the board through this function called draw board which is called called whenever the board has to be updated by the program what it does is it iterates through all 64 squares on the board picks a color obviously being first light brown then dark brown and based on the library called chess adjusts each piece on each square so now you may be asking how does the program know where to put each piece on what specific square. And this is actually 
received through the game processing.py file, which over here actually sends information about what updates to the board have been made in the chess program to this save move txt file this save move that txt file change it changes based on what updates have been added to the board so let's say i want to move my pawn up to pieces as you can see the board has been updated you might have seen a change in this value it was very brief but basically what happened was when i clicked that pawn to go up two pieces it sent a little message in the save move.txt while i was sending information into this file the game processing.py file was actually looking for information in the save move.txt and once it received it, it it got that move that i made and using the minimax algorithm generated its own move and you may, may be also asking how did how do we see its own move the um, night here appear on the board. Well, we see that because after it deleted the information, it added some new information onto save move.txt onto the second line. So the first line was for my move, second line was for the opponent's move. And actually, once the GUI received this opponent's move, it also called the update board, which is in this code over here. I use, obviously, this was very hard to run as one program. I used both threading and also sub processing to actually make these two programs communicate with each other. As you can see, I, I use some threading here between this check computer move and update after move function so that the computer knows exactly when to update the drawing board after it receives the move from the enemy player. And to actually run the function, I do not run it through any of these two files, but I run it through this own separate function called run which uses sub processes to individually run both these pi files so that they open at the same time they can communicate with each other and we see the effects of it on this board which i can make more moves over here pretty fast